Blair here. Welcome to another video episode of Back to the Past. I wanted to update everyone on my error code 61 and what I've done to resolve it. I do have everything working correctly now. Maybe several things that I've done to resolve it. First of all, and most everyone knows this, is there is a firmware update both for the monitor and for the inverter and that has to be done on both of these for error 61 to go away. Second of all is to double check everything. Make sure you've got all of your plugs in the proper location between uh, your master unit and your slave unit, the communication cable going down to the battery and such. Make sure all those are correct. And then the one that was getting me is the communication cable between the master unit and the master battery. And it doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know why they did it this way or why it hasn't been corrected, but there is a proper end for this communication cable. There is a white end that is marked either EG4 or I don't remember what the other designation is, but if it says EG4 on it, it has to plug into the battery. Um, if it has the other designation on it, it has to plug into the inverter. And then the other end is a plain end. So that is what I had wrong that was giving me the error 61 code problem. I remember that watching another YouTuber that said all they did was to unplug it and plug it back in. I tried that and that did not work for me. So what I'm thinking is, for that person, what he probably did was unplug the cable, took the cable out completely, and when he plugged it back in, he plugged it back in, inverted, and then that got rid of the error code 61. But that is fairly important. That is extremely important if you want error code 61 to go away. There are settings in, I think it's setting 28, that makes this a, a master and a slave unit. Um, or vice versa. Um, there are some settings in, in section 1, 2, and 5 that I did some changing on also. Um, I think it was section 5, but it may have been section 2 uh, that changes the, um, the priority to where this draws from. And I've got it set up for solar, then battery, then utility, which I'm not even hooked up. To. I'm completely off grid right now. For my utility, I will end up using a backup generator. Then there's another thing, and this is something, and this relates to, to the solar panels. I know that there are other YouTubers that have said that as the temperature increases, your power output from the solar panels decrease, and that is true. And what I'm finding out is its voltage that decreases. And I guess the National Electric Code even addresses that just a little bit. Um, but what happens is as the temperature goes up, your voltage drops. And then just the opposite as temperature goes down, your voltage increases. And the NEC requires that you, when you uh, compute your wire size, that you figure for the coldest expected temperature that that we have here. And for this place, I saw nine below zero. I think that's as cold as it's probably ever going to get. It may drop just a little bit colder, but you have to increase your voltage requirement by 25% at that particular temperature. One thing that I guess I was surprised by, and I shouldn't have been, is that when I first tested this system, I had the temperature was around 40 degrees. This was about a month ago. Had a temperature of around 40 degrees. I had an output at the solar panels of 288 volts. I had solar panel output in here of 280 volts. So I had an eight volt uh, voltage drop and that was just accounting for the wiring. I used a 10 gauge wire from the panels to here and uh, that's about a 3% drop, which is certainly acceptable. I could have used probably a 12 or a 14 gauge wire, but my voltage drop would have been even greater than that. Now, with these EG4 all-in-one units, 
they will handle anything between 90 volts and 500 volts. So I'm well within that range. I'm just about in the sweet spot in the middle of that range, but it's something that I think if I were to take just two panels, put them in series and bring it in here on a cold day, probably this inverter would work. I would be at over 90 volts. On a warm day like today, it wouldn't work. It, I, I don't, it may not, it may shut it down completely. I don't know what actually the results would be from that. But when you're designing your system, you have to make sure that you are counting for both the minimum temperature and the maximum temperature and what happens to your voltage when that happens. My solar panels are the Canadian Solar 245 watt bifacial uh, panels. I've been extremely happy with them. I, when, when I looked at 280 volts about a month ago at roughly 40 degrees, now it's been in the 50s, 60s, and even uh, today in the 70s, um, that I'm getting way less than that. Um, and I thought that it was more than a coincidence, of course, and I'm not under lab conditions, so this isn't exact. But I know there is often a difference between a laboratory condition and a field condition. And what I tried to do is to test it over a period of several days at various temperatures. I recorded those temperatures. I did the tests between 12.30 and 1 o'clock every day to where I'm getting my maximum solar input. Um, it's been sunny every day except one. One day was a little bit hazy and I did account for the difference there. But I wanted to go over the results of what I, I had over that time period. Now, as the voltage decreases, the MPPT's job is to increase the amperage to as much as what the solar panels will put out to keep your total wattage as high as possible coming into the panels. I had this, uh, I ran, the one thing that I did is I ran everything down to 75% before I started this test and then again did it midday. So I'm going to pull out my handy engineer's field notebook, a two before, and tell you what my results are. Back on 315 or around 315, it may, this may be give or take a couple of days, where the temperature was about 40 degrees, I had that 240 or 280 volts coming from the panels being measured into the EG4s. Um, at that point, I was getting 6.4 kilowatts of power out of the panel, 6,400 watts. I have six panels wired in series, two sets of those, and those two sets, then one goes into each inverter. This one to my upper panels, this one to the lower set of panels. So 6,400 watts is actually more than what those panels are rated at. Uh, 445 watts times six wired in series um, should give me a total of 5,340 watts of output. I've got as high as 6,400 watts of output, again, at 40 degrees. Then on the 8th of April, the temperature, see, I guess I had it at 72 degrees, and I had 206, 226 volts of output and a total of 5,000 watts. And I don't know that this is average. I, I actually checked it several times and I tried to stay toward the high end of what would be the average of the panels because I wasn't here monitoring it every minute. On the 9th, it was 60 degrees. My voltage went back up to 274 volts and I had a 5,600 watt output on that day. On the 10th of April, it was 65 degrees, and this day was just a, a little bit hazy, um, but on this day, I had 239 volts coming from the panels, a total wattage of 4,490 4, watts. And again, that one I got to kind of throw out because we didn't have full sunshine that day, 65 degrees. Then on the 11th, 
again, 65 degrees, but sunny. My voltage output dropped off to 223 volts, and my wattage output was 5950 watts on the 12th. 69 degrees and sunny, I had a voltage output of 231 volts and 4820 watts of power. On the 13th, which was yesterday, it was 70 degrees, had 231 volts again, 4820 watts of power, and then today, uh, April 14th, 72 degrees, I had 229 volts and let me check my wattage. Right now the panels are turned off because of noise and it's going to get noisy when I turn these back on. I'll just turn on one inverter and we'll see what we've got. Stay tuned. Alright, I'll try to talk over the noise here, but today at 72 degrees I have 2.44 plus 2.42, so I have 4.86, so 4,860 4, watts of power at 224 volts on that panel, 220 volts on that panel. I'm going to shut. I'm going to shut this back down. I turned both of them on. So again, the amount of voltage drop from 280 down to 225 is pretty significant for a 30 degree temperature difference and something that should be figured into your design. I know other people have talked about that the fact that you do have that uh, drop in power, um, but I wanted to check it myself and actually put some numbers to it. Now the one thing that Back to my field book. The optimum operating voltage for those solar panels is 40.9 volts. Uh, that times six would be 200 or 254 volts, if I did my thinking correctly here. Those panels have a short circuit current of 11.64, and there was one of these days where it was a little bit warmer when uh, I had actually a fairly low voltage that my current actually jumped up to about 12.3 amps. So it actually exceeded that short circuit current. Um, the National Electrical Code requires that you up your amperage or you up your wire size to account for the amperage plus an extra 25% and that's why it's being done. Um, those panels also say a maximum breaker or fuse size over current protection of 25 amps maximum. And I've got uh, 25 amp breakers here and here. I've got 20 amp breakers at those two places and 20 amp fuses out at the solar panels. So I am within all those parameters. Actually, I'm tickled with the way things are working. Having solar panels that will put out more than what they're rated at, I think is a pretty spectacular thing. And that's really because of the bifacial makeup of the panels. You can actually use them on the roof. There is some amount of light that comes all the way through the panels and then would be reflected back up to that backside of the panel sensors. But what I've found is there isn't a lot of light that comes through it. The bifacial panels, man, they work great on a ground mount system, particularly when you can give them something to light colored to reflect the light back to the back side of those panels. Um, on a roof, I'm not so sure they'd work real well, even on a white shingled roof. Um, I don't think you'd get anywhere near the solar output from the back side of the panels as I'm getting with a ground mount system. So I really, really recommend the bifacial panels for a ground mount system, not so much probably for a roof mount. I'm hoping this has been beneficial and especially to someone who is a DIYer that is designing their own system and doesn't have help from an engineer. 
I have an uh, engineer that actually watches my channel and does a little bit of input, and I really, really admire and appreciate the input that he puts on it. So um, check out some of his comments too. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you'd like to add a comment below, please do that too. This is a fairly short episode, but I wanted to update everyone on my solar system. Maybe in a year after I've gone through a winter and actually looked at some very cold temperatures and see what my voltage output and total wattage output is on these panels, I'll report back on that. But again, I'm happy. Have a good day. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.